This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. The previous chapter went through and had a look at the financial objectives of an entity. So we went through there and looked at a little bit of ratio analysis, uh, a little bit of growth trends. We also looked at how the economic variables would go through and impact those financial objectives. But there's a limitation, isn't there, to your financial statements, that the financial statements are very much focused on looking at the financial objectives. So giving you numbers to evaluate those financial objectives. And also they're very much focused on looking at the past of what's happened, isn't it? So we want to try and address those issues, don't we? So we want to try and think about maybe looking to the future, so looking forward. And we also want to think about the non-financial objectives. And that's where this chapter comes into its own. Because I'm not saying that financial statements don't give information about future prospects. It does. There's the director's report, the chairman's report that talks about what's happened in the past and also talks about a little bit what the plans are for the future without giving away too much. Uh, in terms of thinking as well about your non-financial objectives and non-financial information, then there is information within the financial statements, isn't there? A lot of businesses now put in corporate and social responsibility reports. Fine. Is there any guidance about the corporate and social responsibility reports? Is there any guidance about what you talk about with regards to how the business has generated value in the past and how it's going to generate value in the future? Not really, no. Okay. This chapter talks about it. We talk about the Global Reporting Initiative Framework or the GRI Framework, which goes through there and begins to think about the non-financial aspects of a business and thinking about the economic, the environmental and the social impacts and how a business can follow the framework so that if different businesses follow the same framework, we can get a better overall picture of how each of those businesses are addressing those non-financial issues and therefore we have better comparability and we can make better decisions, not just from a shareholder perspective, but also from a stakeholder perspective as well, giving them more information because, you know, a lot of the information in current financial statements is really cluttered, isn't it? There's not much organisation to it, OK? You know, we don't want to start binning the clutter and condensing it a little bit. And hopefully the GRI framework may help. Uh, similarly as well, uh, thinking about more towards the future, we look at the International Integrated Reporting Council's framework or the IR framework, the Integrated Reporting Framework which looks at what is referred to as the capitals. We'll see that there's six capitals. Uh, I won't go through them all, but uh, as well as thinking about financial capitals and how we've created value and created value into the future. So yes, there is a financial element. It also looks at non-financial aspects. So human aspects uh, go through there. Uh, looks at natural aspects as well. Okay, so thinking more about the environment and and how we can use the environment to, to help generate value, but making sure that in the future that we don't take too much in terms of consuming the resources that we have. So it, it's a really good forward looking tool thinking about value. OK, and hopefully if we follow those in the future, we'll be able to go through there and address those issues. OK, so let's just go through uh, and have a look there at the limitations of the financial statement, just in a little bit more detail. OK, making sure that they were happy. So where have those limitations previously come from? OK, so we've got there. some of the non-financial objectives are human objectives, OK, intellectual objectives, natural and social and relationship. Now, I don't think there's anything there that you specifically need to learn about them. It's just having an awareness of them and they're just taken straight from the syllabus. OK, uh, so when you think about your human factors, you know, think uh, that if you're retaining key staff, that's going to help you generate uh, better profit, isn't it? OK, so the non-financial objective will be to retain key staff or to increase the staff retention rate, won't it? And then ultimately, by working on that non-financial objective, that will improve your financial objectives, won't it? If you know, if you think about uh, is it the, the, the tech companies in California, uh, you know, think about Google, you know, if you think about the working environment for those employees, uh, the benefits that they get, that ensures that Google... Uh, Facebook as well, you know, keep uh, and originally employ and then keep the best tech employees. And that then means that they can come up with innovative ideas because it's innovation, isn't it, that drives success in the tech industry. If you don't have innovation, 
then you're going to struggle. Okay, but there's nothing in Google's or Facebook's reports that you know goes into that in a huge amount of detail. There is a bit, but again, there's no guidance. Okay, uh, what about intellectual non-financial objectives? What about uh, trying to go through there? If you're, a, say, a car manufacturing business uh, and you go through there and create a number of patents, you know, a patent gives you the right to your idea. Uh, so, you know, you're generating new technologies. Similarly, in uh, so the mobile phone business, there's recently been issues, hasn't there, in terms of patents being copied with Samsung and Apple, and they've been fighting each other but in, in their various countries around the world. Okay, Maybe you want to go through there and develop a particular number of patents during the year because the more patents you generate, the more likely it is that you will generate more wealth into the future. Okay, Again, th th there's maybe a bit of information contained within there, but there's nothing specific in terms of guidance that we can go through and follow. Uh, natural uh, financial, or sorry, natural non-financial objectives, thinking about the environment, you know, particularly if you're in the, the energy business, okay? You know, you need to make sure there that in the future you keep generating energy for the consumers. But if you're generating energy, you only have a, a finite level of resources in terms of the Earth's natural resources, don't we? So you want to start thinking there about uh, looking at new ways of creating energy, more environmentally friendly ways, whether that's solar power, uh, wind power, tidal power, nuclear power. Okay, uh, and again, the financial statements have began to show that in the past, in terms of your corporate and social responsibility reporting and environmental reporting, more to the point. But there hasn't been anything specific that's been issued in terms of guidance. Okay, and then at the bottom, your social and relationship aspects. That's trying to make sure that your, your business maintains uh, charitable donations, uh, does something worthwhile f for local causes. Okay, uh, And by doing that, again, that improves the, the customer awareness, the brand awareness, doesn't it? So as well as meeting your non-financial objectives, it will improve your financial objectives. Recently, as I speak, uh, as the President of the United States has introduced this, this rather crazy immigration ban, uh, there's been quite a number of American companies that have come forward and said that they disagree with the Im immigration ban, rightly so in my perspective, but let's not get to, uh, too political. Uh, and what they've done is they've set up charitable funds to go through there and help people who've been displaced uh, by the immigration ban. Okay, Again, that raises commercial awareness of their business. It, it, it's for a good cause. And you know that will then ultimately draw people towards that business and it will hopefully then make more money in the future. It's not just about making more money. They do genuinely care about these social issues, but it's improving the relationship issues and social issues. Whenever I go shopping in my, my local supermarket, there's always notice boards about what they're doing within the local community in terms of raising charitable funds uh, and being active in terms of either helping the elderly or, or young children uh, get the most out of life as what is possible. Is that in the financial statements? No, it's on a notice board, okay, in my supermarket. Uh, but if they put more of that in the financial statements, then that might help, okay? Uh, so let's just go through that, uh, play around with it from an exam perspective. I enjoy talking about this, but we've got to get an exam focus. And just have a look there, a, a typical type of example that you could potentially get in as an exam question. Uh, it'll be one of those horrible select all style questions. Ooh. Uh, so you get them all, you get it all right. Uh, if you get one wrong, you get nothing, okay? Uh, so it says, which of the following are examples of non-financial objective so i'm thinking there is it a human objective is it an intellectual objective is it a natural is it a social and relationship objective okay uh if it is it's non-financial if it isn't and it's anything to do with the financial statement or share prices uh then that would be a financial objective and we wouldn't select it okay uh so the first one a reduction in staff turnover so you know, that's making sure there that we try and keep key staff. We don't want them to leave, do we? So that's a non-financial objective. If you want to be specific, a human objective. Okay. Uh, growth in earnings per share. Oh, what a nonsense that is. Uh, that is a financial objective, isn't it? Okay. Similar to the example that we saw in the previous chapter, whereby we looked at the compound growth, didn't we, of our earnings per share. Uh, C, a reduction in the company's carbon footprint by 25% over the next five years. That's a big focus, isn't it, for businesses now, uh, especially with targets for emissions being focused on by governments around the world. Uh, that there it is a natural, okay, non-financial objective, isn't it, thinking about the environment. 
An increase in share price. No, 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 not at all. Okay. Uh, that is a financial objective, isn't it? Okay. Although not directly linked to the financial statements. Uh, it's thinking there, isn't it, about how the business can grow with regard to its value. Okay. So that's thinking there about a financial objective. An increase in company charitable donations. Uh, yeah, excellent. That's a non financial objective. That's more of a social and relationship aspect, isn't it? Okay. And then the last one, a reduction in the number of staff sick day to below the national average. Yeah, uh, it's not talking about keeping key staff, is it? Okay, it's trying to reduce sick days, maybe by improving the working conditions, the working environment. So that's thinking about human aspects and is therefore a non-financial objective. So is it A, C, E and F are all non-financial objectives? Okay, uh, you'll find a couple of similar examples in the revision kits of your chosen provider uh, so make sure you work through those and build up a knowledge of all the different types of financial and non-financial objectives okay uh, the last little paragraph there goes through as i said and, and repeats essentially what i've spoken about already uh, limited guidance that there was previously in terms of the social environmental issues and we're going to look at the global reporting initiative the gri in the next video so that promotes economic sustainability by looking at economic, environmental and social perspectives, whereby the International Integrated Reporting Council framework, so the IR framework, Integrated Reporting Framework, uh, shows how a company creates value through what we refer to as six key value drivers. Okay, very much being implemented in South African businesses. So if you were looking to to get a little bit more of an interest in the IR framework, have a look at some South African companies that have implemented it. Because if you think about South Africa as a nation in terms of how it's going to develop, a lot of its development will be based upon the resources that the country has, hasn't it? Okay. Uh, so therefore, it wants to promote the use of those resources, but promote it in a responsible fashion in terms of how the South African companies will create value the shareholders create value for the stakeholders in an appropriate fashion okay uh, so that's it in terms of the brief introduction uh, and a little example as well in the next video as i said we'll talk about the gri and then we'll talk about the ir framework so i'll see you then